Hi, in this video, we're going to be looking at unit testing with mass transit. So let's get stuck in. But let's start off with a readme file that we can use to just set up the skeleton of this test application. So we're going to start off with a new mass transit worker. And let's go into that directory and let's add dependency injection because dependency injection is always useful. Now I'm going to create a unit testing project, dive into the, let's add dependency injection again. And also let's add the reference back to the project that we've just created. So now that our unit testing project has got the ability to view our um, examples green project. So diving over to the code now, I want to have a look at the consumer and let's pad this out a little bit. Let's create a constructor and add by login. And let's log something out so it will at least know that this is being run. Next within the unit test, let's scaffold out the unit test. And we need, uh, well, we would like to have um, dependency injection. We're going to raise an, uh, an event by publishing, and then we're going to test that the event was actually uh, subscribed to and hit within our consumer. So let's dive to that, give it a build so we know that everything's okay, and then let's run the test. And as you can see, our tests are green, we've passed, which means that uh, the test harness was successful. We can test here that um, the consumer for set color was actually called and that it was consumed by the harness. So we know that when we raise this event that our consumer actually run it. Let's set up Visual Studio just so we can run the test within Visual Studio. And we can also debug, which is tremendously useful for developers when we're building and, and shipping code and just development of, of code from day to day. Let's get this set up. It'll go away and find all of the uh, tests within our project. And then of course we can just run it from there. I'm going to set a breakpoint just to demonstrate that now uh, we're able to actually debug and jump straight into the consumer. Even though we've created a test harness and we are running things from a unit test, we can dive straight into the consumer in a way that your code would do in production. So if we just run that through into the breakpoint, we should be able to see that eventually we'll, we can run through to the breakpoint. And now we can actually see the variables and all the values from our contract and message within that context. And we can actually then help debug any particular problem or even just write TDD programming. So here we can see in the message, we've got hello, not, not a color, but um, that's part of the test. We can actually see them values being, being pushed across. But let's make this a little bit more concrete. Let's create a color checker that has the ability for us to check the color. So I'm gonna add a new uh, consumer here called color checker. And I'm going to update this so that we can actually pass in uh, an object that allows us to check the color. And we're just going to return whether we think that the color is valid or not. So here we're seeing we're using the response respond async, which means that the, the consumer is able to pass data back to the caller. And I've got a video on that links above. So let's set up the contract mix, make sure that we've got the correct values, we've got the correlation ID and, and the color set up so that we can pass these values across. And finally, we're just going to add a check to see if the color is green and if the color is green, we're going to mark that as valid. It allows us to give a little bit more contextual change. Um, shows that there was at least something being processed from the consumer, which allows us to extend the test and make the test a little bit more real.
So let's create our new unit test. And this unit test is going to get a response back. So here we're creating our collection again, our dependency injection. We're setting and registering our consumer. We're going to create a test harness and start it. And then we're going to make a call out to our get client request or get request client, sorry. Um, passing our color checker, passing the object that we want to pass through to the consumer. But we're also going to get a response back. And within that response, we're going to be able to see um, whether it was valid. And we can also get the color that was returned back from the consumer. So this, again, within a unit test allows us to actually check that not only was the consumer being called, but the data that being returned was also what we expected, which allows us to do a more end-to-end um, -end test within our estate. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually use the in-memory test fixture, which allows us to actually get rid of a lot of the boilerplate code. We can see here that I was just needed to register my consumer. I then overrode the configure in-memory uh, receive endpoint, which allowed me to just specify which consumer I wanted to wire up. And now I'm able to actually test that that, that data was um, sent really, really quickly. And I've got a rid of a lot of the boilerplate code within this unit test. Now this unit test is just the same as the previous one, it's just a lot easier. And this is because a lot of the complexity has been hidden away uh, within the test framework that's provided by Mass Transit. So the test framework there provides the in-memory test fixture. And we're able to just override the configure in memory receive endpoint, set up the consumer that we want to register. And we can also get handlers to events that are happening within the test harness, uh, the ability to actually see if a message was received or if the bus uh, produced a particular message. For instance, if it went and published another message, we'll be able to see that. And of course, we're able to put breakpoints on and run this and debug this just as standard test-driven development code. So here we're going to debug this. I put a breakpoint on. And although this is using the in-memory test fi fi uh, feature, uh, we're able to just break through and actually test and, and see the variables within the code as you'd expect any other .NET code to have as part of its debugging process. So here we could see there was a bit of a problem when I was debugging this, that it actually wasn't calling through. So I've just fixed that up. I've registered the service with independency injection, and now I can actually debug and go all the way through into the consumer as you should expect. So here we can see the debug point hitting the consumer, and we can see that this has worked exactly the same way as it would do on your production system. And that's how you want to test this. Of course, you could just create a new instance of the set color consumer and try and pass in them values, but that's not a real life test, especially if you have something like sagas or events that will raise other events. Using uh, the in-memory test harness allows you to actually test how mass transit will work when it's integrated, including things like the difference between send and publish. So here I'm just changing the send endpoint to a publish just to show you that it's got the ability to use different types of pushing mechanics. So now let's create another test and uh, we're going to use the in-memory test feature. I'm going to create a, um, a create request client, which allows us to actually go and get data from a consumer. Once again, configuring the in-memory receive endpoint to register our consumer and then make a call out to the consumer, get the response back and assert that the values are you, as you expect. This code is using, again, the in-memory test feature, which uh, fixture rather, which means that 
a lot of the boilerplate code has been taken out. Any, it, anything that reduces the complexity and the boilerplate that's within our unit tests is a good thing in my opinion. So here we can see this is set up and this test pass. And we can test this by just uh, making a false assertion. And I always like to do that with my unit test just to make sure I don't have any false positives. Here what I can do is run this and hopefully I should get an exception. Uh, uh, an exception to the assertion. And we can see that we do in fact get that. We expected it to be green and it's returned brown. So here we've got the color brown being passed in. That's going to return back as invalid. And then the unit test will fail and we'll get the message that lets us know that um, it wasn't a good test. We can change that back to green, run it again and get a passing test. You guys still here? Wow, we're done, we're finished. Well, thank you for getting to the end of the video. Great job, gang. And remember, please do me a favor, click that subscribe button, wherever it might be, and also that little like button. Thank you very much.